are at the beautiful southernmost house today and joining us is our state representative holly rashine holly it's always a pleasure to see you thank you so much for talking with us and today. so fantastic to be here and thank you for having me there is so much to chat about this morning holly so let's get right into it first of all you recently passed a really important piece of legislation this past session and that was the florida keys stewardship act talk with us about the impact that that has here in the keys well, the Florida Key Stewardship Act is a very comprehensive uh, piece of legislation that we worked on this year in Tallahassee. And uh, we just had a, a really great team that was put together from Key Largo all the way to Key West in the middle, you know, Marathon and, and Key Colony Beach. And everybody uh, worked together and we were able to uh, to pass this bill and what it does is it sets up a long-term framework for really uh, our two key issues facing us as a community right now water water quality water projects and of course land acquisition so um, the one side it's obviously uh, finishing up our wastewater projects huh, <laughs> finally um, and then turning to another important subject which is stormwater uh, we all are in the community we see when it rains really heavily there's flooding um, if we have king tides things like that so stormwater is covered under the bill as well as canal restorations uh, restoration our canals were dredged um, many many years ago uh, we're hearing from residents that um, canals are dirty they're getting stopped up things like that so um, some of the resources that this bill brings to the community can be spent on that and then again um, as an, a community we are under the ROGO system, as we've talked about before. Mm -hmm. And land acquisition is so important as well, and it can be very expensive. Um, and the county has a plan to uh, first start buying up the uh, most environmentally sensitive lands and then moving on um, to other to other tiers. But so the Florida Key Stewardship Act kind of puts that framework in place as well as drawing down some dollars. So this year we were able to bring in five million dollars in cash for water projects and um, five million dollars for land acquisition. So it was a real win for us. Absolutely. That is so significant for the Florida Keys. Holly, you are so busy right now because you are also in the middle of a campaign season on top of everything that you're doing for us here in the Keys. How is it going so far? It is going really great and actually um, we're just about to finish up with qualifying so that's always an exciting time to see exactly what the field is going to look like and uh, everybody loves a good campaign <laughs> so uh, as a candidate myself I'm looking forward to my favorite part of the campaign season which is getting out into the community mm -hmm. um, that's one of my favorite things to do as a state representative anyways and this mm -hmm. just kind of takes it up a notch and um, we'll be traveling a lot um, through the Keys and I just like to remind everybody that our district 120 actually goes all the way into southern Miami-Dade County mm -hmm. so we have to cover about hundred and fifty miles one way mm -hmm. for our district but again um, I couldn't be more honored to represent uh, us in the Florida House and, and looking forward actually to the next four months. Wonderful and Holly you do such a good job of getting out in the community. I see you so often here in Key West. What would you say really differentiates you from your opponents? The main thing is experience. Um, I've really dedicated most of my professional life to the state legislative process, um, working as a legislative aide you know, prior to running for office and um, living here. I actually live in the Keys and uh, my opponents are actually from the mainland. Um, we are such a unique community. We have uh, environmental needs, we have housing needs, our insurance rates are, are definitely a concern. And I think that I've had the opportunity over the last four years to really meet with people, to really listen and to try to help them um, with, with some of those um, really big issues. And uh, I think it's experience number one, it's passion. And I really do love, I love this job. And uh, again, hope to continue doing it. Holly, let's talk about something that I know I'm very interested in and a lot of other people in the Keys are interested in it as well. And that is Bloodline. I've already finished season two. Of course I watched season one. Spoiler alert, watch yeah. out. <laughs> I won't share anything. Uh, I understand though that they might not have another season down here in the Keys. There also might not be other films in the state of Florida. Is there anything that's going to be done to keep that from not happening? Well, Jenna, I certainly hope so. Uh, this is one of my, or was one of my top priorities this past session and will continue to be one of my top priorities is to put into place some kind of film program that 
draws productions like Bloodline. I am a huge fan. Um, I like to share with folks that maybe don't have this kind of thing in their community, but the um, economic impact on all the small businesses, on the community, um, that these uh, long-term series have. And I think um, really highlighting the economic benefits, not only to the Keys, uh, but the, the entire state of Florida. I mean, just one season of Bloodline drew down um, tens of millions of dollars. Wow. That's a huge impact mm -hmm. at the local level. And, um, you know, uh, movies are great. Mm -hmm. You know, they're kind of like one-stop shop, just one, uh, one-time things. But, but um, series like Bloodlines, those are long-term. I mean, mm -hmm. I heard of uh, folks, maybe actors or production uh, people that wanted to buy homes in the Keys mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. rent long-term or whatever. Um, it's a real win-win situation and again unfortunately we were uh, unsuccessful in passing any, anything this year and what I've heard from the industry is that they're kind of um, gathering the, the stakeholders and, and getting support together to hopefully present to the legislature something that that we can pass and I'm really excited to see what that's going to look like mm -hmm. I want it to happen I mm -hmm. want it to happen for the entire state and certainly to mm -hmm. see uh, a season three of bloodline oh me too well you'll have to keep us posted oh on that. I absolutely will mm -hmm. all right and before you go today Holly talk with us about Zika that is a big concern down here in the Keys it is um, Zika, uh, cross our fingers, we have not had a domestic case. So all the cases in Florida and actually in the nation have come um, from people who have traveled outside of the United States. So first and foremost, I want to remind people about that. Mm -hmm. um, however, it is a very real concern, especially in our area, our community, being so close to the rest of the Caribbean. And um, our neighbor to the north, Miami-Dade County, has the most cases actually in the state. Um, what I am proud um, to share and to see is that our um, state leaders um, from the Commissioner of Agriculture, Adam Putnam, um, Governor Scott has obviously taken a huge leadership role in this, just making sure that everybody uh, is prepared, that the departments of health all around the state are prepared to not only um, share information, but to react mm -hmm. if there is a domestic case. And I know, um, you know, physicians around the state are kind of getting briefed on what to do when their patients come in with a case of Zika. Um, but so far, so good. We have not had a domestic case, but it's something that we really, really need to be prepared for. And I feel like we are in a good, um, a good state right now. But we, again, you know, preparation is key. Mm -hmm. Definitely good news to hear. Holly, thank you so much for spending time with us today. Good luck with the rest of your campaign season. Thank and you. I'm sure we'll see you soon. Thank you so much.